These are the waiver wire pickups for week four. Sitting atop the list is Bucky Irving. The fourth round rookie out of Oregon has made his presence felt in the Bucks backfield. Despite playing half of the snaps that Rashad White has, he has been far more explosive and productive, averaging 6.1 yards per touch. In comparison, Rashad White has averaged a pedestrian 2.1 yards per carry, and the only thing keeping his fantasy value afloat is his role in the receiving game, where he has 12 grabs for 98 yards. I think it's only a matter of time before this becomes a full-on timeshare, with Irving potentially being the 1A. Even though Irving may not be the biggest at 5'9", 192, he's shown that he can handle the NFL speed and size. Through the first three games, he's led the Bucks in rushing. I really like his rest of season outlook, and he's only rostered in 35% of leagues. So if you're looking for a running back whose value should continue to grow, I would make him a priority. Number two on the list is Chuba Hubbard. To say that Andy Dalton breathed life back into this Panthers offense would be a huge understatement. We saw Deontay Johnson, Adam Thielen, and Hubbard look like completely different players today. Hubbard in particular finished the day very strong. He had 26 touches for 169 yards and one receiving score. And while Jonathan Brooks is on the pup list, he should be a workhorse for this offense. The Panthers and Dave Canales have made a concerted effort to run the ball. Through the first three weeks, they've added more rushing attempts in each game, and I expect that to be the case moving forward. Once Brooks does come back and is inserted into the lineup, I do expect Hubbard's role to take a hit. They did spend a second round pick on Brooks, but I think with him having an ACL injury, they're going to bring him back slowly. Miles Sanders will still likely be sprinkled here and there, but he's no threat to Hubbard's workload. He's already rostered in 51% of leagues, but if he is somehow available in yours, I would definitely make him a priority as well. Number three on the list is Jawan Jennings. If you somehow picked up Jennings before today, congratulations. He probably single-handedly won you the week. The Rams had no answer for him. He had 11 receptions for 175 yards and three touchdowns easily beating all of his career highs. I do think this performance was somewhat of an outlier and he benefited greatly from Debo Samuel and George Kittle being out of the lineup, but for however long they are out of the lineup, I think Jennings is a must-start player. This is probably as high as his value will be. Brandon Ayuk is still knocking off the rust from his contract hold-in and I expect him to get better with each week, but as long as this team is banged up, Jennings should have some solid value. He's only rostered in 31% of leagues, and if you're in need of a wideout, I would definitely target him this week. Number four on the list is Darnell Mooney. If you would have told me at the beginning of the year that Mooney would be the leading receiver in a core that consisted of Drake London and Kyle Pitts, I wouldn't have believed you. But here we are. Through three games, Mooney has 18 targets, and it's pretty apparent that him and Kirk Cousins have a pretty strong connection. I like Mooney for the rest of the season. He's benefited greatly from defenses focusing in on London, Bijan Robinson, and Kyle Pitts, and I think he should have a pretty stable floor in terms of targets. If anything, his opportunities may even grow. He's pretty much been an every down player, and with him only being rostered in 26% of leagues, I think he's worth adding in every format. I see him as a high end WR3 in PPR with some low end WR2 upside. Number five on the list is Alan Lazard. Talk about being hot and cold. He's pretty much a touchdown or bust player at this point, but I think most weeks he'll be relevant just strictly because of his relationship with Aaron Rodgers. I expect Mike Williams' role to continue to grow as he comes back from a torn ACL, and he'll eventually be the WR2 on this offense. But at this point, Lazard has pretty much been playing the same amount of snaps as Garrett Wilson. And as long as that is the case, I think he's worth considering starting on a weekly basis. He's currently rostered in 30% of leagues, and if you're looking to take a chance on a risky WR3, he's a good person to target. Number six on the list is Tyler Conklin. Boy, has the tight end position been decimated this year. Trey McBride got evaluated for a concussion today, Sam Laporta left the game, Evan Ingram's been out with a hamstring, and David Njoku's been out with an ankle. So if you're looking for a replacement, he is someone to strongly consider. He's coming off of a five reception, 93 yard game, and I think with Aaron Rodgers continuing to round into form, Conklin should continue to have value. He pretty much has no competition at the position in New York, and he has played over 90% of the snaps in each of the first three games. He's only rostered in 14% of leagues, so if you're looking for a depth play, he's someone to consider picking up as well. Number seven on the list is Jalen Naylor. I mentioned Naylor last week, but I think he's worth mentioning again. He scored in every game this year, and he seems to have the trust of Sam Darnold, particularly in the red zone. Naylor's benefited greatly from how banged up this receiving core is. Jordan Addison's been out since week one with an ankle injury, and he doesn't have a defined timeline for a return. So Naylor's been the WR2 on this offense. And for however long Addison is out, I think Naylor is worth considering as a risky WR3. The biggest issue for him has been volume. 
He's only had 9 targets on the year, but given how he's getting looks in the red zone, I think he's still worth consideration of an ad. He's only rostered in 11% of leagues, and he's probably best suited for deeper leagues. Number 8 on the list is Rashad Bateman. Bateman caught 3 of 4 targets today for 28 yards and a touchdown, and he's been pretty much an every down player on this team playing nearly the same amount of snaps as Zay Flowers. And with Mark Andrews' role shrinking over the last couple of weeks, there may be an opportunity for Bateman to carve out some consistency in this offense. Talent really hasn't been the question for Bateman. It's always been health. If he can stay on the field, I'm curious to see how he does. He's only rostered in 10% of leagues, and if you do decide to pick him up, temper your expectations. On the year, he only has 8 grabs for 121 yards and 1 touchdown. Number 9 on the list is Calvin Austin. Austin caught 4 or 5 targets today for 95 yards and a touchdown, with 55 of those yards coming on a slant he took to the house. The thing holding back Austin is the fact that the Steelers have the second most rushing attempts in the league, and they're 3-0 so I don't see why they would mess with the formula. I think best case scenario, he may get 4-5 to five looks a game, but he is very explosive, and this team does need more pass catchers behind Pat Fryermuth and George Pickens. He's pretty much available in every league, and if you do pick him up, keep your expectations somewhat low. He's only playing around 45% of the snaps. Number 10 on the list is Josh Downs. Downs is more of a stash at this point. He made his season debut today after nursing an ankle injury through the first two games, and he had three receptions for 22 yards. Doesn't really jump off of the page, but given how dynamic he looked last year, I think his role will only grow. At this point, he's probably third in the pecking order behind Michael Pittman and Alec Pierce, and he's also hindered by Anthony Richardson's inaccuracy, specifically over the middle of the field, which is where Downs does most of his damage. He's only rostered in 25% of leagues, and if you have an open spot on your bench, he might be worth rostering just to see how he does over the next couple of weeks. Lastly, I want to make a quick honorable mention and talk about Brenton Strange. He filled in for Evan Ingram last week and looked pretty good. He caught 3 of 6 targets for 65 yards. He's a second round pick, and I think for however long Evan Ingram is out, he might be worth picking up. If Strange looks good again tomorrow on Monday night, he'd be worth picking up in deeper leagues, especially with how thin the position is. Those are the waiver wire pickups for week four. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and let me know which players you think we should pick up in the comments below.